And thank you all for showing up tonight, and I think we can all agree that we've had some fantastic speakers, and I hope that you enjoy what we've got to say. I'll be around afterwards. If you want to ask me some questions, please feel free. I want to talk to you today about choices. Now, of course, we're talking about elections, so we're going to be making a big choice on June the 4th, and you're going to get your ballot paper, and I hope that you will consider us for your vote. Now, you've probably been driving around the region, and you've seen all these posters of Churchill doing this sort of thing. And I know a lot of nodding heads, so obviously you have. Now Churchill, after the war, said that Britain had a choice. He was talking about there needed to be a United States of Europe because he felt the Europeans culturally needed to unite. What he also said is that Britain shouldn't be a part of it. He said famously, and we're talking about choices here, he says, if Britain has to choose between Europe and the open sea, we will choose the open sea. Now what did he mean by that? What he meant is that Britain's destiny is global. You know, we're not just a little tiny European country that can only trade with its neighbours. We are a global powerhouse. Our language is the world's language. A lot of our institutions have become the world's institutions. And we've given the world things like <coughs> democratic government, individual liberty, freedom of speech, things that we should be deeply proud of. So we can instantly become a global force again. Now, Coming back to the Churchill poster, he talks about £40 million a day. Well, let's do a choice. Do you think we should spend that £40 million a day on the EU, or should we have 2,000 nurses' salaries for the next year? All those in favour of the EU, and all those in favour of the nurses? I think that's a unanimous vote. <laughs> okay, well that's, that's the stark choice that we face. We can either continue to give money to the EU, and we don't actually know how a lot of this is used, or we can say, right, we're going to use it here on our own people. Let's do another poll. How many move for polls? And as John said, the polls that you do an opinion as opposed to people with long surnames. Okay? Are we going to spend £40 million a day on the EU, or should we have 500 top heart surgeons paid for for the year? All those in favour of the EU? Come on, not all at once. <laughs> all those in favour of the 500 heart surgeons. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put me down for that one. You see, it's choices. You cannot have both. You can't have the 500 surgeons and EU membership, especially not when money is tight. We have to make a choice here. Now, let me talk to you a little bit about this money. You might think, well, we give money to the EU, and how do they use it? Well, let me tell you how they use it. Has anybody here seen these people with high visibility jackets and clipboards who say, Hi, would you like to give me two pounds a month? Anybody seen these people fundraising in the street when you're trying to shop and they follow you, don't they? Yeah. You know, yeah. you're trying to walk, you, oh, no. you think if you don't make eye contact, they won't see you. Uh -uh. They will follow you like a homing radar. They're way too cheerful for people on an early Saturday morning. Now, did you know that you were funding these charities anyway? So whether or not you say, yes, I'll give you two pounds a month, or no, no, thanks, I'm going to go to Sainsbury's now, you're funding them anyway. I've been researching EU funding streams, and we are being forced to support charities that have highly political agendas. To you and I, I used to work for a charity in Liverpool. A charity is something that exists to help people, and that people choose to support out of the goodness of their heart, not something that you are forced to fund. And we are forced to fund things. We're talking about choices here. We get no choice in how our money to the EU is spent. For example, some of our money goes to a charity called the National Coalition Against Deportation, which basically says you cannot deport anyone ever. That includes terrorists, that includes serious criminals, that includes people who openly discuss the downfall of the UK. Would you choose to support them if you had the choice? Let's have a show of hands. Anyone? No? Okay. But your choice is taken from you. The European Union and the British government say, sorry, you have to fund these groups. You have to fund them. And guess what? These groups, which pretend to be neutral, then push political agendas. Friends of the Earth, funded by the EU, Friends of the Earth Europe, that is, released statements about how great the Lisbon Treaty was. 50% of their funding comes from the EU. 
Do we think they were saying that because they generally believed it or because they were getting a large check? And by check, I mean money, not people with slightly shorter surnames. <laughs> well, it's all about choices. We believe in choice. We say if you want to run a business and you want to have people smoke there, that's your choice. If you don't want to smoke there, that's also your choice. The government shouldn't come into it anywhere. If you want to choose your destiny, you should be allowed to do it, not have somebody do it for you. Now let me give you some more choices. Who thinks that we should spend £40 million down in the EU or use the same money which we could use to feed 300 million people in the third world? 300 million people. That's five Britons of the world's poorest. But we're spending it on the EU. And the EU actually creates a lot of poverty. I read a report in Brussels, which I dug out myself, and it said, and I kid you not, it said to Africa, you can't fish off your own coast. The Europeans go now. They also said, half your farmland, you now have to grow biofuels. Fuel instead of food. And then they said, you're not allowed to cut down the trees for more farmland. So, you can't fish. Half your farmland is now being used to grow petrol. And you can't build more farmland. Is it any wonder people get desperate in these countries and try to leave? Is it any wonder people in these countries get violent, desperate thoughts in their head and launch military coups? Because we'd do it. If we were desperate and could not eat, we would not be living in the sort of society we're in now. And the European Union has caused that poverty. Now I choose that we should help these people instead of keeping them locked down because of EU policies. And there's another choice I'd like us to make. I don't hate Europe or Europeans, not at all. I've lived and worked in European countries, had a lot of European friends, had a European girlfriend, not for very long, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> well, that's what I believe in. I believe I actually like Europe and its cultures and traditions. We believe that we should trade with Europe. We should be friends with Europe. If we want to go on holiday to Europe, great. If their sports teams want to play our sports teams, fine. If we want to send our kids to university for a term there, and they want to send their kids to university term here to experience it, that's also fine. What's not fine is legal and political union. Especially not when you don't have any say in how it goes on. Now, what I hope you will do on June the 4th is you'll think about some of the stuff we've said tonight and say, well, how should we spend that 40 million? Should we spend it on our hospitals and our schools? Or should we spend it on the EU's paycheck? Because we're talking about poverty and pensioners. In the European Union, if you work for the EU, you don't pay tax on your salary, you can get a subsidised rent and a bulletproof pension. And you pay for that. Congratulations. And you also pay, some of you have got kids at university, you pay for EU Commission staff's daughters and sons to go to university. We spoke briefly about my Belgian ex-girlfriend. She went to a university in the UK completely free of charge, because her dad worked for the EU Commission. Now, should we pay for our own kids to university, or pay for someone else's as well? I don't think that we, we should be doing that. What I want to see, why I joined UKIP, is because I want to see trade and friendship with all nations. If we were not a member of the EU, we could sign our own trade deals with the rest of the world. And we could say to other countries in the world that are suffering, we will trade our way out of this global recession. We can't do it because the EU represents us in trade and the EU won't allow it. Now, you have one final choice to make. As Terry said before, there's really three parties with the same agenda. The three-party, one-party state. If you want to give 40 million a day to the EU, vote for Labour or the Conservatives or the Lib Dems. If you want to spend it on hospitals and schools here, vote for UKIP. If you want to be bolted into a political and legal union, vote for Labour, the Conservatives, or Lib Dems. If you want to have a free and fluid trading relationship with the entire world, vote for UKIP. Thank you very much.